Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Quantum Action. Today, we've got Ben Woodward talking to us from Utah. And uh, Ben's a very successful businessman. He's going to tell you a bit of his story and about his new book that came out just a few months ago and how that book came about and what each one of us can learn from that book. And then we're going to talk about his businesses and ventures and how lockdowns has changed the economy and what Ben's view is on how things are going and what we can see for the future and what opportunities are out there for you and everybody else that's watching and listening to Quantum Action. Ben, welcome to the podcast. Over to you. Yeah. Tell us about your new book and how it came about. Cheers. Thank you. Um, yeah, so my book's called The Empowerment Paradox. Uh, the objective or the, the essence of the book is recognizing the duality of suffering and joy, how they're really two sides of a single duality or reality, I should say. Yeah. And, um, and the purpose here is really to understand you know, why is it that some people will struggle, suffer, and really just come out worse for it. But there are others that will struggle, suffer, but will come out and thrive and be radically transformed for the better by it. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of look into that in my book and just kind of go, what are the certain essential virtues and characteristics that we need in order to respond well to adversity? Because, you know, the reality is, certainly the older I've gotten and kind of gone through life, I've learned that everyone will suffer in some way, in some yeah. shape or form, as a consequence of their time here on this planet. So, well, as I always say, good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. Yeah. It's what you do with the experience that counts. Exactly. Yeah. So, so in the book, we look at, you know, we're all going to suffer. That is a reality. But how can I respond well to it? And not just respond well and with strength, but you know, in many instances, it is the suffering that we experience that reveals to us our purpose and our opportunity to become the best version of ourselves. How do I experience that? How do I make that transformational as, as an experience for, for me? And so, you know, I, I, it's not a formulaic process. That's the thing. I, I didn't want it to be a, you know, follow these six steps and you will find that you've got the solutions because it's not really about formula. Everyone's suffering is unique. Everyone's challenges are very personal. Um, but there are certain virtues that are timeless, that are, universal and that and when we understand those principles and those attributes and we apply them in our lives then as an independent person we can take control of that learning that journey and evolve and transform for the better as a result so yeah because in, in your book you get very personal and you share your personal experience would you like to share that with with those that are watching and and and, and yeah yeah it, it's it's you know if you're going to talk about adversity and suffering you need to talk with some personal experience and relating to that. And, and that was a bit that initially I was a little nervous about. You know, it, it was interesting as a writer to, to discover that you know, a key to writing well is vulnerability and courage. Mm -hmm. you know, whatever you put down on paper, it's gonna stick. You know? And if you're gonna share a personal experience, um, you know, that's, that's gonna be out there forever <laughs> when you print, yeah? yeah. Um, but yeah, so some of the things that had really caused me particular challenge you know my, my father had gone to prison um not only did i have to see my dad go to prison i had to testify against him in court i facilitated the court case or his arrest in the first instance that was certainly not an easy experience um the night before he was um due to go to trial you know he had a heart attack got went to hospital i think the stress of everything was mm -hmm. just you know on him. i had to get permission from the judge to see my own dad uh, mm -hmm. when he went to hospital because I was a witness against him yeah. in the court case. And so it's like, well, we can't really have you talking to the defendant, um, but let's get a permission, get, see if we can get permission from the judge. So yeah. there was all that kind of stuff that went on. And, you know, for, you know, for a period of time, um, it was just one issue after another, after another, after another, that was just kind of bombarding me. Um, that, uh, that, that, that gave me a different experience because sometimes we have hard things happen, but other things, happen for ages like that scenario there with my dad that drug out for years you know um it's not something where you get arrested you go to court mm -hmm. you know you get sentenced you go to jail you come out you carry on it's like there's a whole did, did he go to jail for a long time uh, he did he, he he was in prison he served about four and a half years uh in total he was in jail uh, he, he was sentenced to he had a seven year i think concurrent sentence so there were multiple crimes he was convicted of which he served the time concurrently i guess and 
yeah. uh, ended up serving four and a half years in total, which meant he wasn't at my wedding when I got married. He was in yeah. jail. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't around when my firstborn arrived. He was still in jail. Yeah. But when my second was born, he was still in jail, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. and uh, yeah, he, he missed out an awful lot there. And um, and, and, and I, I should point out, you know, I, I did a podcast a while ago and uh, this subject about my dad came up and someone, they said kind of afterwards, like, um, I don't think I could send my dad to jail. Yeah, you know, I'm not, you know, what, what kind of, if you don't mind me saying, what kind of douche sends their dad to prison? Yeah. Right. That's yeah. not a very nice thing to do. Yeah. And I was like, well, we're not talking white collar crime stuff, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, not, yeah. not that you make an excuse. Yeah, of course. But, but my point is, uh, he was guilty of some horrific crimes and he left victims in his wake. Yeah. And, and you've got to do what's right, not what's easy. Yeah. And you've got to stand on the side of right, not on the side of what is popular or preferable. Yeah. 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 And, and that was the hardest thing in my life to do. Um, yeah. But it was important to do and it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it was in his own best interest. Get this out of the way, get it behind you, move on. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be living with well, how this. Is he, so now, obviously, he's out of prison. How, how did he cope with life when he, when he got out? Uh, he became a hermit. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he kept to himself. Um, yeah, I think he made a couple of friends you know, during his time. He passed away earlier this year. Um, okay. And, yeah, he, he kept to himself. He was a hermit. I, I think it changed him quite dramatically, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it was tragic. He, he had the chance to evolve and to change. I don't think he fully embraced that. Uh, in, in some ways, he made some changes, as I think, as best as he could. Yeah. Um, but I, I think there was a long road to recovery for the lifestyle that he had chosen, that he probably needed a few more years on this earth to, to get to where he needed to go. But I think, I, I think he started that path here. And, yeah. and that's, that's, that was my preference. Yeah, there's... Yeah. get on that path to change here it's yeah. going to be painful it's unpleasant but you got to do it you know rip the yeah. band-aid off so yeah. yeah yeah so so yeah that certainly informed the book a lot is you know um yeah how do you deal with chronic suffering because i think when we experience um difficulty adversity sometimes it's for a season but yeah. sometimes it stretches on and when it stretches on for years then that suffering demands something else of us you know, mm -hmm. and how do we respond to that? Because now all of a sudden, um, it's not just simply a matter of patience, though patience is essential. Now I've got to understand it in a whole different level. And, um, and that's, that's really where we kind of jump into that in detail in the book. And, and it turned out, actually, the, the book was published back in 2020. It came out just after the pandemic hit. Yeah. And, um, and, and I'm grateful it became a bestseller um, overnight, which was awesome. Um, but um, but what I found interesting was that subject suddenly became incredibly relevant mm -hmm. across a whole spectrum of industries. I was, you know, I, I had universities um, reaching out, wanting me to speak to them, you know, help, help us, you know, find joy again in what we're doing because this this pandemic is killing us and we're struggling and life is hard. Help us to find greater purpose and, and reconnect with that yeah, I mean and to find fulfillment. I mean, without, I mean, the pandemic, not so much the pandemic, I think it's the lockdowns that has mm. affected the economy and people's minds and has done more yeah. damage than the pandemic yeah. itself. It's, it's, yeah, the, maybe it's the pandemic is it. the lockdown. The lockdown is yeah. the real pandemic. I mean, that's what's really got to people's heads that yeah. businesses fail and all sorts of problems happen, but also um, offer new opportunities. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And because and, I think what, what the, the lockdowns did, was it it forced the hand in embracing certain technological benefits that were always there mm -hmm. that were underutilized and underused yes. yeah and, and so I, I think that kind of that that did a lot of good in some respects in propelling our engagement with certain technology um, and adapting to the way of life you know from a work perspective uh, that w had been available for a long time but never fully embraced that work from home, or at least now that hybrid approach of working from home or working remotely and then coming to the office in part, but recognizing you can do both. You know, you don't need to be present in an office in order to function effectively. You know, yeah. I, I, so so you've been in the network marketing business a long time. How did that business of yours fare during COVID and lockdowns? Uh, it thrived uh, because what was interesting was 
you know, we were, you know, network marketing or direct sales has always been an events based industry, right? Yeah. It's, you, you kind of work from event to event. You have a great experience because when people are all gathered together, that's where confidence grows, mm -hmm. conviction happens, and, and it really strengthens it. It fortifies because emotion is contagious. Yeah. So the value of those events was really critical. Um, but in between the events, uh, everything was done remotely. It was all done over Zoom. It was done you know, on Skype or face-to-face -face over Facebook Messenger or doing it online and reaching out through social media channels and all that kind of stuff. So prior to the lockdowns, um, my business had been working on Zoom every week for years, or for ages. Yeah. Um, so when that happened, the events became digital and became virtual yeah. um, and everything else remained exactly the same. And so while there are a lot of people going, how do we use this Zoom thing? What do we do here? And how do we make this work? And they're all trying to figure it out. Uh, we just effortlessly glided forwards. Yeah. And, and that was really good to see. I, I do think, you know, in the context of, you know, where it's taking business and things, I, I think what was interesting was, I think for direct sales, they, they did well during the lockdowns and the pandemic because people suddenly became more mindful of their health. Yes. Uh, they weren't suddenly taking things for granted. A lot of direct sales companies are health centered in the products that they offer. A yeah. lot of it is wellness and nutrition yeah. and that type of thing. So people were suddenly more concerned and more interested in their personal well-being and not taking it for granted. That became a benefit when you've got that as a core message. I can help you do yeah, better with your yeah. health. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the business model did well. People were suddenly struggling financially. Things that they had taken as a sure bet of I'm secure in this, suddenly their jobs weren't secure. Yeah. Suddenly they were needing to look over their shoulder, look for second incomes, look for other opportunities, look for some safety nets, that type of thing. And so people were turning to entrepreneurship more as a consequence in order to keep themselves secure and keep them safe. So the message, again, that had always been there suddenly became more relevant and more applicable to many people in that moment. That was good. I think yeah, yeah. I mean a lot of people in my industry, in the aviation industry, had to leave their jobs or they were yeah. or took early retirement. And then they suddenly to discover the world outside aviation. Yeah. And now that aviation is a bit of a turmoil, you know, all these flights being delayed and whatever. And yeah. one of the biggest problems is people that used to work at the airport no longer want to work at the airport because they've got themselves another job. I mean, for example, yeah. there's a lot of airport workers that here in England now have become driving instructors. Mm. Yeah. And so, you know, you run your own business. You, you, you bought a car, you're teaching people yeah. to drive, you know, you work your own hours, you, you set yeah. the hours, you, you, you make money, you're your own boss. Why go yeah. back and load bags at the airport? Exactly. And, and that's the thing. That's, that's uh, I think, kind of the next kind of pivotal step that has happened uh, through this period of, of lockdown and change and adjustment and, you know, new trends and behaviors, mindsets all kind of emerging from this is at first everyone went into a panic you know, and, and there's a lot of freezing, kind of stalling, not knowing what to do. Those that learned to pivot well and, and pivot quickly, I think, came out the other side and thrived. There were other companies, I think, that didn't know what to do. Um, didn't want to take a risk, didn't want to change anything. And th they got sucker punched, you know, and it kind of knocked them to their knees. But there's a lot of people in that process as well that went, I can do something else. Some went to direct sales, of course, as we talked about that, that industry, it's a hundred plus billion dollar industry. It's a, it's a sizable um, space, uh, uh, place for you know, financial economy. But, um, but there are other places that started to emerge and do really well as well. You know, because people were looking for that new gig and that gig economy was kind of thriving and kind of hustling as well. And, you know, affiliate programs, digital marketing, uh, drop shipping, you know, and, you know, doing things like you said, you know, becoming an Uber driver, a driver instructor, yeah. you know, doing whatever you know, they were turning their hands to all sorts, setting up their own businesses, doing their own thing and going, if I'm going to work from home, I'm going to pursue the stream now that I've never done before. And, and that started to change. And I think what's happening now is, yeah, we were always, as consumers, um, quite opinionated over the last few years. We, we've got so much. We live in the information age. And as a result of that, especially with big brands like Amazon that dominate you know, online shopping, 30% 30, 30 of all sales, I think, uh, online sales in the States, for example, comes from Amazon. Yeah. Right? It's just crazy. But that, that kind of sets a, a precedent for what people expect as an online shopper. And in this digital age where we are so inundated with information, uh, shoppers are very opinionated. They have certain expectations and standards. 
And I, I think that's starting to evolve now. And the shopping experience is getting easier and easier, both to consume, but then also to put it out into the marketplace. So, and, and that's really quite interesting to see how that's starting to shift now and the trends that are coming out now as to what motivates us to buy, how we buy, how we connect with brands um, and how brands are reaching out to their audiences um, in this yeah, there's been a, I mean, retail as in shops in malls and things and that have suffered big time because people are going on the internet. Yeah. Um, and now a lot of companies are kind of looking to have a showroom in a mall, not yeah. so much a store. Yeah. Uh, people can come and touch the stuff before yeah. they buy. Um, and so, you know, there's so many retail spaces that are vacant right now all over the yeah. world. Yeah. Uh, because things have moved online. And so now you no longer need to open 20 stores. You open yeah. one showroom and then have one big warehouse in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah. Where with maybe with drones that deliver, and that's the next yeah. thing that can happen. Drone delivery is already yeah. started in certain parts of the world. I mean, in New Zealand, the uh, Domino's are delivering pizzas with drones, and in certain parts <laughs> of the United States, yes, yeah, yeah. so you can go on the app and have the drone delivery within ten minutes. Yeah, uh, it comes down with a, with a, with a wire, so it yeah. flies over your house. It warns you, okay, the pizza's ready. It's above your house. Okay, yeah, yeah. They just it's not it's they crazy. The box yeah. down, and then you take it, and then off it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, that, that and Amazon, of course, have invested into that drone delivery as well. Mm. Uh, and yeah. I think what the lockdowns have done is they've just accelerated all these things that were already in the making. Yeah. It's just going to gonna happen sooner. Exactly. Then. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just sped the whole process up. Yeah, yeah. So what, our onboarding what, experience. What, what, what other opportunities do you think this whole lockdown has created besides the ones we've just mentioned? Well, I, I think one of the new spaces that is grabbing a lot of brands' attention now for, from a marketing perspective is um, user-generated content. Yeah, so you, um, UGC is now one of the primary ways, I think, of being able to reach out to audiences and connect. And user-generated content is really influencers on social platforms that have an audience because what, what, we've, what we've already developed an affinity towards is but we like other people's recommendations yeah, yeah. E even with what we watch on tv you go yeah. to netflix or amazon and if it's got two stars i go oh that looks good oh it's got two stars and maybe not and i'll flip past it i don't know who those people are that voted it to give it two stars but as a collective i go i'm going to trust that and i move on oh yeah we're, and we're, you can get a product kind of because I've, I've had one of my books um and i didn't get the marketing yeah. right in the beginning and people have gone on two or three people and given it two stars. So it's just not selling because it's got bad reviews. Mm. And you're right. Yeah. It can yeah. kill you or it can, it can make you a success. And, and you're right. I mean, every, before I buy a book, I go on and I have a read what the book's about. And then I go and read the reviews and see what people are saying about this book. But I don't know who these people are. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But we still value their opinion, even though we don't know who they are. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And, and so what, what's happened now is you, you combine that psychology of kind of herd mentality and you know that aspiration that we put to other people that are influential uh, and and put the value that we have on their opinion but you combine that with social media where now people can get incredible followings online and great engagement with their audience um, and then they can talk about a product or a brand and now what you've got is a user experience uh, that has influence and impact on an audience that is targeted i was speaking to a guy the other day he's got a million and a half followers on youtube incredible mm -hmm. um audience and incredible engagement and he's like you know the motorway down the road he says i get more views on a post that i'll place on youtube than that that uh, billboard will take in a yeah. single day yeah and he says so you know brands will pay for billboards there but they don't necessarily know who's seeing it maybe it's not quite as targeted yeah. uh, with us he said um that you know exactly how many views you're getting with your audience you know who the audience is, you know, the gender breakdown, you know, the demographic, you know, their interest rate, interests and what they're working with. He said, you're all of that. It's all measurable data. Yeah. So from that perspective, it becomes very powerful then to brands, for brands to collaborate and connect with influencers and utilize that well. And, and the interesting dynamic that we're seeing now is it's not just big influencers. People have got, you know, like I said, this guy's got a million followers. It's, mm -hmm. it's the micro influencer that is actually proving to be very, very popular right now. So the micro influencer is like, someone that's like, 
it's like me with my channel about private aviation, BizJet TV. I mm. mean, we've got 17,000 subscribers. And someone could say, well, that's not many. Yeah, but there are only mm. 22,000 private jets in the world, which equates to about 18,000 owners. So 17,000 subscribers is not, is not bad for, for what it, for that's pretty awesome. its purpose. Yeah. Because it's one of these micro yeah. situations you just said. So you don't have to it's, have it's, a it's niche market, targeted, yeah. Audience. Yeah, yeah. targeted audience. Yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah, great marketing nowadays is you don't use a broad brush to paint. You yeah. use a fine tip brush. You know, it's it's laser precision. You know, you, you know exactly who your audience is, you know exactly who they are, what they want, you know, why they want it, what the problems are they're facing, how you solve it, how you fix it, you know, where they spend their time, who they hang out with. You gotta you gotta really drill down and know all those details about your audience. And then you talk to that person, you know, and then when you do, they listen, they hear you because you're talking with such precision and such accuracy because you know who they are and you know who you are, that you're now having this wonderful, it's almost surreal conversation where it's totally, you know, you're not face to face like this. You're talking out through your social channel or through wherever, and they, wherever they are around the world, they pick up on it. And it's that person that you were targeting that hears it. And they go, I, I feel listened to, I feel understood, I relate to that, and they connect. And that's how you build that loyalty and ongoing kind of engagement. But the micro-influencer, like I said, it, it's, they're becoming increasingly popular right now because you know, they've got smaller uh, audiences, but they have a higher by percentage engagement rate mm -hmm. with their audience as a result because they're, they're newer, they're younger, um, they're a little bit more authentic in their message. Um, they're talking a little bit more with a little bit more realism. They're a little bit more. Um, they're real. They're, they're, they're real. more real. Yeah, yeah, they're more real. And 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 people respond more favorably to that. But so their engagement rate is fantastic, um, and they're certainly more affordable than some of the bigger influencers as well. So there's there's a, a win for brands in getting more message out there. So it's it's interesting to see that trend developing. Well, um, even even yeah, in so the brands. Yeah. I mean, even the, the whole thing of citizen journalist. I mean, there's so many people now online that probably are giving more reliable information out there than the news. Um, yeah. So you're right. Yeah. I mean, th th there's so much that this has done. It's almost like before we lived in a centralized world and now we're living in a decentralized yeah. world and we're moving towards decentralized. Exactly. We, even, yeah. we even see this with Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency where before it was centralized with the banks, now it's being decentralized. And it's the same with information. The yeah. Information is being decentralized, and that's power to the people. Yeah. So if you're good, you're going to yeah. win. If you're not, you can't rig it. Before you could rig the game, you can't rig the game anymore. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, it's a and different story now. Different. Yeah, it's field. it's like we saw just this last few days. Um, this guy Andrew Tate, which you may have heard of on on mm. YouTube, yeah, he yeah, yeah. started doing stuff Think. in January. He's a yeah. multimillionaire, and and they just banned him from YouTube and another of other platforms the other day. And then he suddenly yeah. the next day appears on Rumble, <laughs> and he, yeah. he stuff like and, you know, and they, and they thought that, that by censoring the guy they were going to get rid of him, but no, they've actually just made him a lot bigger, and they've actually now got yeah. more people moving over to Rumble to watch his stuff than 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 on the other yeah. platforms. So it, it just shows it's power to the people, yeah. um, and if the, you've got the followers yeah. because you've you're sharing information yeah. which to them is valuable, you're going to win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's just go yeah. back to multi-level so marketing. I, I, yeah. Let's just go back to multi-level market, yeah. marketing. So you're saying that the business has grown. So do you think, as an industry, it's 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 an, an opportunity that people can jump on today more than ever? Um, and do you think that industry is just going to exponentially grow now because people are more accustomed to working uh, I, from home and working digitally instead of being in hotel rooms giving yeah. presentations? Yeah, I, I think it's it's a strong and robust industry. It's been around for a long time. Um, it, it is in, in a growth state, which is great. Um, will it grow exponentially? Uh, that depends on how they respond to the current trends that the world is facing. Yeah, yes, I, I think there are some moves that they need to make that enable them to be a little bit more customer centric um, and a little bit more tech savvy. Um, yeah. So I, I think there are some adjustments there. And, and some of the brands within the industry are doing a great job of that. Um, others are a little slow to follow, but I think they'll get there. And it, it'll either be you know, new companies coming into that space that will take the trends and show them how it works in that, in that space, mm -hmm. um, or um, others will adapt and adjust and some will get left behind. But I, I think that's the same for any industry. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah you're right. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, is it doing well? It's doing great. Yeah. Which is really nice to see. Um, so let's move into now your new venture, your fashion yeah line uh tell yeah. us a bit about how this came about and 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 you know how it's going and where can people buy your like the shirt you've got on now you told me yeah it's so lovely brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool so tell us a story yeah yeah so so the brand is called lovely l-o-v-l-e-i um yeah. so lovely.com is where you can find it or lovely life if you want to follow us on instagram that's that's a good way to kind of check us out mm-hmm. um yeah it's it's a premium resort and athletic wear brand uh so uh primarily women's clothing. Uh, we do the guy's shirt, of course, we'll expand into men's clothes um, down the road. But yeah, it's, uh, I'm very biased, but it's a phenomenal brand. Uh, yeah. My business partner, Robin, uh, her family's been in the fabrics industry for almost 100 years. Her, her family were credited for really kind of pioneering the California surf lifestyle culture. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of the major surf brands that you're familiar with, um, Billabong, Quicksilver, Mossimo, uh, Hang Ten, Ocean Pacific, uh, Ralph Lauren Polo is another brand, for example. Yeah, all those types of brands and a ton more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they've all used her family's prints and fabrics and what have you uh, mm-hmm. for years. You know, like some of them, like Quicksilver, they helped them get all started. You know, it was it was their their prints, their fabrics mm-hmm. uh, that were used. So. Uh, they'd always supported and built these other mega brands um, and created, like I said, this incredible culture of surf uh, California lifestyle, uh, but never kind of owned their own brand. And Robin and I uh, got introduced through a mutual friend. I had this business idea that I was looking at that I thought was kind of revolutionary. It's a hybrid kind of approach to getting the product to market, which we can, I'll, I'll fill you in on a little bit. Um, uh, but I, I was thinking of apparel, but I didn't know much about apparel at that point. Yeah. Uh, and he introduced me to Robin. She knew everything about apparel. She'd worked in that space all her life. You know, her, her family businesses, you know, they're like, you know, she's like the fabrics queen, you know, in the fashion world in the States, right? She, she's yeah. just very well known. We had an article actually by the California Apparel News uh, a few weeks back, which is like the trade publication for the fashion world in California. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they were like, yeah, it only took about a hundred years for these guys to launch their brand. Yeah, but thankfully, yeah, we've waited long enough. We're glad they're here. Yeah. Um, it was, it was kind of, you know, they're recognized as being a great name. So, so she liked our business idea that I had. We kind of partnered up, and um, and so um, we've got this kind of hybrid business model. It's like I said, it's a really cool um, premium resort wear, um, athletic wear brand. Um, but the way that we're getting it to market is really working and partnering with influencers. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have a, a program here that we offer for them that is really unlike anything else that I've seen in the marketplace. And in, in fact, I don't think there's anything that competes with it. We offer, you know, obviously a lot of influencers will promote their, you know, if, if they're partnered with a brand, say, I really like this brand, you know, Lovely, for example, they'll show it off, they'll showcase it, and they'll say, and this is where you can find it and they can share a link and they'll get paid a commission for doing that, but they'll also offer their followers a discount. You know, look, you know I want this to be a win for you. So here's a discount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we offer our influencers like discount codes that they can share with their audiences oh, um, to give them something to support their audiences yeah. and, and yeah. to reward them for their loyalty. Yeah. Um, and we, we, can, we pay out incredible retail profits to them for kind of sharing it. But the cool thing about it is we know that influencers collaborate with other influencers. Oh yeah, right. They do that all the time. It's if if you want to grow your audience well, you've always got to network. That's just a fundamental yeah. principle of any good business, right? Yes, or exactly. anyone that wants to do online. Well yeah, yeah, it's it's not just about being the smartest or hardest working person in the room. You can be the hardest working person in the country, but if no one knows you, what good is that going to do? You yeah. will get nowhere. Right. So. So you've got to learn to collaborate and partner up in order to truly thrive and connect and do well. It's about your connections. Yeah. So we put something in place that says, look, if you know other influencers and they want to do this too and, and be brand ambassadors with us, you, know, you can make up to 10% on everything they make every single month. And, um, and it, it, that's, we're finding that is becoming very, very attractive. We're at an event last week uh, with a lot of influencers and literally they were biting their hands off to partner up and to be a part of this they they love the brand they love the fabrics they are it is an incredible 
high quality product and they could feel it. We had it all out there. So they, they, they loved the story. They loved the brand, um, but they loved our program. They'd not seen anything like it. We had you know, over half of them signing up right there and then on the night, you know, saying, yeah, let's do this. So um, it's really exciting. And, uh, but but the, the, the big thing about it that's, that I love is the purpose behind it. You know, we are all about helping women feel beautiful, not just on the outside, which is what fashion's about, yeah. but also on the inside as well. So we're building this really great community where we have coaches available to all of our customers and our influencers. And, and, and they will teach things on everything from fitness and yoga and lifestyle and exercise uh, to emotional health, to entrepreneurship, to financial well-being. You know, basically, any area of your life where you go, I need to do better, uh, we're going to end up having coaches on that subject that for free um, just provide the service to uh, the lovely so you have to be so what and, you buy so much so, so much uh, clothing per year to, to get the coaching or or can you just buy one no no, no just be a part of our community just be okay. a part of our community yeah and and we we showcase that out and get the word out because and and we'll do we do live events we do live fashion shows which are great fun to be a part of yeah uh, and and yeah you know, most of our models are not professional models they're our influencers they're our customers uh they're friends of friends or friends of family and that kind of thing. Um, and, and it's great because you're now getting a brand out there in the fashion space that's really showcasing authentic everyday people. So almost like real fans. clothing for real people. It is, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I love that and they love it. It makes them feel good. And we, as you can see from this shirt where we are big on prints and things like that versus yeah. we, we have solid colors, but we're big onto the prints as well. And yeah. the reason for that is, you know, we, we even before we got going, we, we sat down, Robin and I, and we we're saying, okay, what is the brand about? What is, what really are we wanting to accomplish as yeah. a business partnership here? Yeah. Um, not in the sense of crafting a story, though you have to craft the story, yeah. you know, in order to deliver it, but in, in, in true authentic expression of what makes us unique. What, what, what is it that we're bringing to the table here that we want to offer so that we can make the world a better place? Yeah. You know, and it was really all about, we want women to thrive. We want them to do well. We want them to have confidence. We want them to feel beautiful. We want to, them to feel accepted for who they are. But at the same time, we don't want to leave them where they are. We want to take them to a better place and help them to become more. So let's create an environment where women can feel good, look good, have a chance to feel better, to feel more confident mm -hmm. and so on. So that's reflected in the business side of things where they can have, you know, be influencers can, you know, do well and partner up with our brand and have fun, have an impact with our coaching where we provide all that experience for people, but also with our prints as well, because when you put on beautiful patterns and beautiful colors, you feel happy. And, and I, I love it at these photo shoots because we talked about this before we ever produced our first item, our first uh, piece of how we wanted women to feel yeah. when they wear the lovely brand. Yeah. And we talked about that and we mapped it out and you know, we describe, we want them to feel confident, we want them to feel outgoing, we want them to feel happy. And we were defining all of these kind of words of the, this is how we want people to feel when they put us on. And I was at one of our earlier photo shoots and, um, and I saw all the, all the models that were kind of lining up for a group shot. Yeah. Right, and they were all wearing our stuff and they all got together in this group picture and we were taking the photographs. And I was like, that is a happy looking group of girls, you know, confident, excited cheerful and i was like if i saw them in a park or wherever you know together out in public I'd, I'd, I'd be thinking that's a happy joyful friendly looking group of people right there oh, yeah. you know and i yeah. love that i was like that's, that's exactly what we're all about you know we want them to feel good and so um yeah so it's it's taken off like i said we've just launched we're about two months old so we're brand new mm -hmm. uh but the word is starting to get out and we've got loads of people kind of trying it out getting excited. So is this just all available on the, the US market? Is it just US market at the moment or are you already going international? Uh, uh, right right now, we're in the process of opening up to ship to international markets as well. Um, so that is coming very, very soon. Yeah. And, and I should say- to do, we're Are you going to do men's year. apparel as well? Is it going to be men's apparel besides- We are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we started with the shirt. We, we brought this out um, in, in a couple of colors. We're already working on um, like some shorts and what have you for next year as well. So we are, because we're going into swimwear and what have you as well. Um, so with, with apparel, you're always working kind of like 
you know, multiple seasons out in the yeah. year yeah. Uh, in order to get, okay, so, you know, we're, we're already halfway through next year in regards to what we're designing for. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're, we've got men's range expanding uh, comfortably in our space next year. So, so sports, you're going to do stuff for sports as well, like golf and polo, that kind of thing, or, or just... just uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, right, right now, it's, it's beach wear, resort wear, and athletic wear. And the, the athletic wear that we have is um, it's leggings, sports bras, um, yeah. you know, that type of thing. Yeah. So the, the men's stuff will be the, the shirts. It'll be shorts. Um, I've, we've not had any conversations yet about um, sports wear, like golfing stuff yet. Um, but who knows what the future holds because yeah, it's a big wide world out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now just to, in closing, I always like to ask people these questions because I know you're 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 a great yeah. reader. You like you love reading. Um, what yeah. have you read? What books have you read recently? What you're reading right now, and um, what can you tell us about what you've been reading lately? Yeah, well, a couple of books that I've been reading recently. One is uh, One Million Followers, which is all about kind of growing uh, digital digital strategies for growing audiences, and you know, th that one is helpful to me just because I'm a brand new brand in the marketplace yeah. and we're starting from ground zero and we want to in an authentic genuine way mm -hmm. connect with people online the as as you've heard the digital space is really our landscape so we want to make sure that we understand that really well so yeah so my head of brand and marketing knows that stuff already wonderfully well but yeah. for my own education i want to get there a little yeah, quicker so that's, that's been sense. helpful. Atomic Habits yeah. by James Clear. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of that, but yeah. I absolutely yeah. love that book. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love just him breaking it down into little things. You know, uh, so many times we have these robust, wonderful goals. And it really comes down to if you want to make significant change and change that sticks and lasts, it's incremental adjustments, you know, and starting out small and then kind of habit stacking, you know, and, and I, I like how he builds it out that way. It's, it just makes good sense. Well, we all know the story of the, the British cycling team that never won anything. Mm. And they charged, started yeah. changing 10, 20 different things by 1% each. And, and they went yeah. from winning nothing to winning everything uh, multiple times. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes yeah. we think we need to make a major change in our life when it's all we need to do is change five things by 1% and, and you've got your exponential yeah. change. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so those two books have been you know, the forefront for me. Good, good. Ben, where, where can people find you online? Because you do speaking as well. So if anybody wants to book Ben as a speaker for their event and that, um, uh, I'll put the link uh, below or on this video. You'll probably see it coming uh, underneath. Um, and so people can go yeah. on and, and buy your book. Um, sure. Yeah, so ben-woodward.com. Yep. Uh, that's that's my website. Uh, of course, if they're interested in the brand, uh, lovely.com, L-O-V-L-E-I. Yep. yep. We'll put that um, there as well. so, yeah, so, uh, so that's a great place. Uh, but yeah, Ben Dash Woodward is where you can find me for speaking engagements and kind of reaching out from that perspective as well. And the book, The Empowerment Paradox, uh, which I'll yeah. hold up here. Yeah. Um, and you can find that in all major bookstores. Um, nice and easy. Super. Thank you, Ben, for being here on Quantum Action. And uh, thank you, everybody. Remember to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.